Our own documents rarely seem complicated to us, but even still, it's a good idea to keep things organized in such a way that if you forget where you put something or how you organize things, that it makes enough sense that you'll be able to put it back together and not have to start all over again figuring out what you did and why you did it. So uh, there are a bunch of shortcuts that I'm going to throw at you in this tutorial, but I'm going to show you guys how I effectively manage loads of layers and just prevent things from getting too crazy. So the first thing that you can do, we'll start from going more simple to more advanced, but the first thing that you can do if a layer is getting in your way uh, is over on the layers palette when you have it selected, there's a little eyeball and you can click on that eyeball to turn it off. So if I don't want to accidentally select header bar, I can turn that off with the little eyeball and I can now go and highlight these things here and I don't have to worry about accidentally selecting the header bar that was behind it. So with these things selected, the reason I selected this group of elements here is because it is one thing. It is the logo, uh, and I would like it to behave as one solid object. So the next shortcut I'm going to do is Command-G for group. And by grouping these things together, they now behave as one object, and they show up over here on my Layers palette as one object. So I'm going to name this Logo, and now Logo is one thing instead of four or five things. Now back to the header bar desktop, uh, I can't see it anymore, so things aren't looking right, so I'm going to turn it back on with the eyeball, and uh, while we're at it, I want to throw out you guys the keyboard shortcut, Shift-Command-H for hide. Shift-Command-H is the same as clicking on that eyeball, it will hide the selected object. And with that object selected, I could also do Shift-Command-L for lock, and you'll see a little lock appears where the eyeball used to be, and now I don't have to worry about selecting it, but I can still see it. And with that, I'm not messing up my design for myself, so I can keep working and uh, not have to worry about accidentally selecting it. So locking can be a good thing as well. Uh, I'm going to click on the little lock over here to unlock it, because the shortcut won't be good to unlock things, because you can't select the things that you're trying to unlock, because you can't select locked objects in the first place. Uh, so just remember to look out for those little locks on the Layers panel itself. So over here, I grouped this logo for the sake of functionality, for the sake of it functioning as one solid object. But all of these things up here are really part of the header of the website, and I would like to group those together for my own sanity, so I don't see a hundred different things on my layers palette as I build out and out and out. So I'm going to select all these, and I'm going to hit Command-G. And by hitting Command-G for group, these now behave as one object. But that's not what I actually wanted. I grouped these together for my sanity, not because I want them to behave as one object. Uh, I just want to clean up my layers palette over here. So I'm going to name this header. But now I'm going to go over to the inspector, and I'm going to check the box that says click through when selecting, which means if I click on something, don't act like a group act like they're all individual objects, and then when I click away, collapse that group. So the group is now just for the sake of visual organization on my layers panel. So it's, it's a really kind of organizational tool uh, as well as a tool to turn multiple objects into one object. Uh, they're both called groups, but click through when selecting is what differentiates the two types of groups. So now that I've got my object here as a group that behaves as one object, and I've got my group here as a group that does not behave as an object, it behaves separately for my own sanity. There is another way to interact with these groups to help you guys decide which type of group you want to create. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to select these three elements that are making up this red box with the icon that says tutorials. I'm going to hit Command G to group them. And I'm not going to choose click through when selecting, but if I want to go in there and I want to move the little icon or if I want to move the text, you can hold the command key and you can click through, even though this isn't the type of group that allows click through. I can use the command key to do it anyways, and then I can nudge with my arrow keys or I can move things around freely. So that's a really cool trick to sort of get the best of both worlds. So I'll group this, group this group this and now best practice would be to go over here and name these things but there's a shortcut to rename most people will double click on the layer but that can get frustrating because sometimes you have to click more than twice sometimes it goes in and then back out again uh, it can just get a little glitchy and frustrating so command R is the shortcut for rename and you don't even actually have to come over here if I just click on this group on the canvas and I hit command R I can rename it I'll rename it red box just for now I'll go to the blue box Command R for rename, and I'll name this blue box, followed by green box, etc., etc. 
Or if you're going to name a bunch of layers all in one swoop, you can go to the first one. I'll hit Command R here. I'll type in header, even though it was already typed. And then you can hit the Tab key, and you can say whatever you want for that layer. I'll say Welcome, Blurb, and the next one, Gray Box. I'm just hitting the Tab key each time, Green Box. So I don't have to go and distract myself by selecting things on the canvas. I can just deal with the layer names and the layer names alone. You guys may have noticed I also use Shift Tab to go backwards. So as you're naming things, Tab will go to the next layer. Shift Tab will go to the previous layer, assuming you're reading from top to bottom. One last shortcut, one last trick that I really like, because I'm a Photoshop user myself. I use Illustrator and Photoshop, and it kind of drives me crazy going between all three of them. But there's one thing about Photoshop I really like, and that's that if I have a layer selected, I can use the Move tool from anywhere on the screen, and I can move that layer without accidentally selecting another layer. So that also works here with a little shortcut, and that is to select a layer. Uh, I currently have this red box selected. And you hold Option and Command on the keyboard. And now wherever you drag on the screen, you're going to move that layer. Notice my cursor is nowhere near it. My cursor is way over here. I can put my cursor on another object directly. I can put my cursor on the logo, and it's still going to move the selected object. So again, that's by holding Option and Command on the keyboard while you have something selected. It will keep that object selected. So really, really critical shortcut. So I hope this makes it a little more manageable for you guys to work with big documents that have a lot of layers and objects within them. If it does, please subscribe. I've got a lot more cool stuff coming soon. And head over to LearnSketch.com and download all the freebies. And uh, if you guys need icons, you can purchase the Icon Mega Pack and have plenty of icons for your design work like I have. All right, guys. See you soon.